the first thing we have to do is make an offline reference clip. So you all you need for this is your video. You just need a timeline of your video. And we just go to output, export to file, send to QuickTime movie, check your options. You don't need to use marks unless you're marking off a specific region of your timeline that you're using. You want to use same as source, but not necessarily Avid Codex. Choose the correct aspect ratio for your project. Uh, use these as you see fit. And make sure you're set to video and audio and save. Choose where you're saving it. Title it appropriately. Once that export is finished, the next thing you want to do is Go through the same menu, output, export to file, but now you want to make an AAF. This option here, it says to Pro Tools, we're going to be going to Resolve. It doesn't matter, you're just making an AAF. Same, like I said, go into this menu, make sure you're set to AAF. Include all video, good. You don't need audio for this, it's just for color, so all we're worried about is video. You want your video effects rendered, because Resolve is pretty good with including those. Um, yep. Save it. AAF, so we know we're good. Once that's all good, we're fine to quit out of Media Composer. Open Resolve. Create a new project. When we start Resolve, we're in the Edit window. We just want to bounce back to Media. Then we go to File, Import AAF. Boom. You can change your timeline name here. I'm just going to leave it this for now. Uh, automatically import source clips. That's important. Also important is ignore file extensions, because you're probably editing on either .mov files or .mxf files. Checking this will tell Resolve that you know, so long as the source name is OK, it's OK to look for an R3D file. Um, not so sure about this. It doesn't hurt to check it. It probably does more or less the same thing. And use sizing information is great if you did any punch-ins in your edit or any kind of reframing. It'll be pretty good about keeping what you did, and that'll make it so that the conform isn't as tedious. I'm going to click OK. We choose where our raw media is. Mine is right here. This is the root folder, and as you can see, the individual days are there, but we can just choose the root folder that has your RAWs. And it's going to take a little bit to look through that, because, you know, raw footage is heavy. Then look at that. Like a miracle, here they are, our wonderful clips. Now, it's possible that you might go through this process and get media offline. Even if you do get media offline, you'll most likely get your timeline intact. And so what I would recommend you do then is just go to your raw media in the media window and just right click add folder and subfolders into media pool and then it'll pull everything in and most likely it'll just relink once you have your media in the resolve project it'll just kind of fill in the timeline it'll fill in the blanks resolve is smart like that uh, once we're here you just want to go oh right ha huh. 
you want to go to your offline reference that you exported and add as offline reference clip. It'll bring it into your media pool with this little cool checkered flag. That's the icon for offline reference. Now, what you want to do is, I'm going to set this like this. You go to your timeline in your edit bin. And go to timelines, link offline reference clip. And now, I'm just going to make this window a bit smaller. We just need to set this to offline. And if everything is well and good, the two should match. And you can just kind of check through your video, go frame by frame, go over every clip and make sure it's right. Now, you might come to a clip. This one, for example, you can see it's not a perfect match. We'll just take our clip, look at it in the inspector up here, and what we'll do is a mix wipe. That way we can see, okay, so I'm missing some information at the top and bottom. It's probably my cropping here. I guess some cropping information carried over from the edit, but linking back to the raws, it doesn't seem important, so we'll just get rid of this, but it looks like we did too much because it still doesn't match. And I have a suspicion. No. Looks like some clips are just like this. So some of our clips have bars that match. Some of them fill the whole frame. So what we'll do is I'll take this into the color window. Go here to my sizing output sizing and we just have to kind of eyeball it and figure out how we're going to reframe this and what we can do is that we can set our reference mode to timeline mm. offline I think is what we want There we go. So what it was, reference mode offline, mix. We just got to make sure that this is selected. So now we can see where we need to bring our lines. So you can just kind of do it by eye. Looks like 30 is the sweet spot there. And maybe we can intuit 1050 is going to be right there. And then this will just affect the entire timeline. So all right. Now this shot, let's see, we'll look at it in our inspector. And yeah, we just have to fix the crop on the top and bottom. Looks like it's kind of like that for a couple of these clips. So at this point, it's really just going through each clip, uh, checking with your mix, wipe, or a difference is another way to do it. So you can see here, we're not perfect. You'll always have small imperfections, like this, for example. This is a shot that, in the edit, I did a zoom in on. So, excuse the playback, it's not great. But as you can see, it's slightly different from the offline reference, but not enough that it's you know, really a problem. And so to finish your conform, you just want to make sure that everything is, you know, right enough, as right as it needs to be. And
and you can adjust things with the zoom here in the inspector as you can see if something's off it'll look like this I'll give them this crazy look um, ooh, supposed to be at one or see what was it oh there we go the position is off, things like this, you know, the rotation maybe. Um, and then once that's done, what you can do is um, say you want your media for color correction on a dedicated drive. What you can do is go to File, Media Management, and then copy a timeline. You select the timeline you want to copy. This is my AAF timeline. And you want to copy and trim used media. Now you can keep frame handles. This is, um. so if you have zero, it's just you get what you get in the timeline and that's it. But say you put 24 frame handles as you can see, it bumps up the size, but makes it so that on either end of each of these clips, you could drag them out one second. So what I would recommend, depending on what kind of storage capacity you have, would be 48 frame handles. That way you have two seconds on either side. So if you're working on the color correction and you know, you're at the end of your post-production process, but you, you know, you're working with the director and they say, oh, actually, can we finagle this like a frame or two? You have the space to, you know, make some late game decisions that don't affect a whole lot of things further back in the pipeline. Now, as you can see, the re current size, 48.8 gigabytes, what that refers to is just um, all of these individual clips that are not cut down. So you know, in the timeline, everything is cut down, and this current size refers to all of it outside of the timeline. The new size at zero frame handles, oh, that's showing you um, just what you have in the timeline. That media specifically, with those in and out points and everything, is only five gigabytes, and then when you include two seconds on either end, it bumps it up quite a bit, but, you know, it's useful to have if you can afford it. And then, more options. Relink to new files. That'll make it so that your project with the AAF, the link, everything, is just connected to those new media managed files. So that way you don't need your raw drive anymore. You can just work off of a dedicated colored hard drive. And that's it. Then you're ready to go coloring, you know, make everything pink. <laughs>